The astronomer Arthur Eddington once said, If you try to go against the second law of thermodynamics, I can give you no hope. There is nothing but for your theory to collapse in deepest humiliation. And that is exactly what we're trying to do today. The second law of thermodynamics comes in many forms, but the most well known is that the entropy or disorder of the universe is always increasing. But this can also be rephrased as the energy in the universe available to do useful work is always decreasing. Let me explain. When things are in a very low entropy or ordered state, they can do what scientists call useful work. For example, imagine a box with hot air on one side and cold air on the other. This is a very ordered, low entropy state, and this temperature difference can be used to create electricity or power an engine. As the gas reaches thermal equilibrium, the energy available to do useful work becomes less and less until eventually there's none left at all. This messy, high entropy state is pretty useless and will never spontaneously reverse into hot and cold air again, unless outside work is put in. If we use something like a heat pump to separate the hot air molecules from the cold, this box can do a lot of useful work again. But it would never have gotten back to that state unless outside work like the heat pump had been put in. What's more is that the work used by the heat pump to create this temperature difference is always going to be more than the work that the temperature difference itself can create. So we always need to put in more than what we get out. In other words, you can't get something for nothing. As the entropy of the air decreased, the entropy of the system was still increasing because of all the wasted heat used to power the heat pump. But James Clerk Maxwell of the famous Maxwell's Equations didn't like this conclusion one bit. He came up with a surprisingly simple thought experiment in hope of finding another way. What if we introduced a tiny demon to our box of gas? Stick with me. A demon that could see which air molecules were hot and which were cold. Maxwell's demon has one job, to let only hot air molecules through to the left side and only cold air molecules through to the right, so that eventually, the box would have hot air on one side and cold air on the other. The entropy of the air has decreased and is available to do useful work again. We know that this doesn't really sit well with the second law of thermodynamics, so let's try and find the source of outside work. Surely the demon opening and closing the door creates heat, so that must be the extra work put in. Well, imagine a scenario where the demon is a bit confused and is opening and closing the door at random. There would still be the same amount of work put in, but with no extra work to put out. So that's not it. Then where is the increase in entropy? It seems like with information alone, Maxwell's demon has defied this almighty universal law. This baffled scientists for over a century. Confused as they were, they were also extremely excited. This idea of getting something for nothing is enough to excite anybody, but for so long scientists everywhere have been trying to create self-powered or perpetual motion machines. A perpetual motion machine could run without any outside work being put in. In other words, a machine that could get something for nothing. There were so many attempts. The overbalanced wheel, the capillary bowl, the Oxford electric bell. But unfortunately, just as many fails. Perpetual motion machines don't work. So what was it about Maxwell's demon that was able to break this unbreakable law? Is there something special about life? Is this law only for machines and not for tiny omniscient demons? It wasn't until a hundred years later when physicist Leo Szilard came along with the answer. The flaw in our system was coming from the most unexpected place, the demon's brain. To do his job, Maxwell's demon needs to be constantly measuring molecules, obtaining information and making memories. He uses this information to lower the entropy of the box, but in doing this, he is using energy to organise all this information in his brain. Imagine the demon's brain as a clean slate. As he starts to make measurements and form memories, the entropy in his brain is increasing as he tries to sort through all this random information. The demon's brain is also a finite size, so when it gets full, he needs to delete some information to make room for more. This erasing of information also costs energy. Heat is created in the process, entropy of the system increases, and the second law of thermodynamics prevails. So thanks, Leo Szilard. Turns out, no. You can't get something for nothing. Sorry if that was a bit anticlimactic. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more physics videos. Just click on my face and hit that little bell button if you wanna get notified. And yeah, other than that, see you next time. Bye.